hands he's got the big round word. In his hands he's got the white word. In his hands he's got the whole word in his hands. Opera singer and civil rights pioneer Marian Anderson made history with groundbreaking achievements in musical performance. Born February 27, 1897, Marian Anderson first sang publicly at age six with the Union Baptist Church Choir in her home city of Philadelphia. Backed by her local community, who sponsored her training, she entered and won a prestigious vocal competition in 1925, resulting in an acclaimed New York recital debut. Her star rising, she then spent several years abroad, building an elite performance career throughout Europe. Anderson sang with a voice famously described by Arturo Toscanini as coming along only once in a hundred years. She headlined concerts with famous orchestras, performing as a contralto with a repertoire that included not only classical arias and requiems, but also songs from American folk tradition billed as Negro spirituals. Interracial audiences often described being moved to tears. By the late 1930s, Anderson had become one of the most famous and highly acclaimed singers in the world. She returned to the United States to begin concert touring, accepting additional challenges posed by pervasive discrimination and racial segregation of her home country. In 1939, Marian Anderson would be right at the center of a defining moment of the early civil rights movement. In January, the Daughters of the American Revolution, or DAR for short, refused a request by Howard University to host a benefit performance in Constitution Hall, their Washington, D.C. auditorium, then the only indoor venue large enough to accommodate such an audience as Anderson would draw. The nation's capital was racially segregated, and the DAR had an unwritten policy of allowing only white performers. Supporters had hoped that Anderson's fame and reputation would encourage the DAR to make an exception to its restrictive policy. But the request was denied anyway. And despite pressure from the press, politicians, other great artists, even a new advocacy organization called the Marian Anderson Citizens Committee, the DAR held fast and continued to deny Anderson use of the hall. As the controversy grew, First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt, who had met Anderson in 1935 at a White House performance, carefully weighed the most effective manner to protest the DAR's decision. She had herself been issued a DAR membership card only after the 1932 election swept her husband, Franklin D. Roosevelt, into the presidency. As such, she was not an active member. Roosevelt initially chose not to challenge the DAR directly because, as she explained, the group considered her to be too radical. As she later wrote, she thought, the situation is so bad that plenty of people will come out against it. Roosevelt agreed to present the prestigious Spingarn Medal to Marian Anderson at the upcoming National Convention of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, or NAACP. She invited Anderson to again perform at the White House, this time for British King and Queen, when they came to the United States later that year. But as the weeks went on, Roosevelt grew increasingly frustrated that other more active DAR members than she were not challenging the organization's policy. Then, on February 26, Roosevelt resigned her personal membership with the DAR, and on the 27th published a My Day column pointedly describing her resignation. In her letter of resignation, she stated, You had an opportunity to lead in an enlightened way, and it seems to me your organization has failed. With the public's attention, determined to forge ahead, advocates coalesced to devise and host a much larger, more inclusive concert event, this time at the Lincoln Memorial, a symbolic site on the National Mall overseen by the U.S. Department of the Interior. Interior Secretary Harold Ickes, himself a past president of the Chicago NAACP, was excited about such a display of democracy. With FDR's direct approval for his opening remarks, Ickes opened the event stating, In this great auditorium under the sky, all of us are free. Fearing that she might upstage Anderson's triumphant moment, Mrs. Roosevelt chose not to be publicly associated with the sponsorship of the concert. She did not attend, citing a nationwide lecture tour and the forthcoming birth of a grandchild. However, she and others lobbied the various radio networks to broadcast the concert to the nation. 
Marian Anderson gave a stirring Easter Sunday performance that April 9th on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. An estimated 75,000 people gathered in the cold to listen in rapt silence, and thousands more heard the concert over the radio. Anderson opened her concert with the ballad America, and the operatic first half of the program concluded with Ave Maria. After a short intermission, she then sang a selection of spiritual folk songs, and with tears in her eyes, closed the concert with an encore, Nobody Knows the Trouble I've Seen. This historic concert focused national attention on the injustice of segregation and on the nation's racial divides. Later that year, Marian Anderson performed again at the White House, this time for the visiting King and Queen of the United Kingdom. The Roosevelts received both praise and racist hate mail for inviting black performers, even the great Marian Anderson, to a royal visit. Not long after, World War II broke out and the nation channeled all efforts toward the war, both on the home front and the battlefield. Anderson entertained Allied troops in hospitals and at bases. With famed educator, organizer, and civil rights activist Mary McLeod Bethune, she ceremonially christened the SS Booker T. Washington, the first liberty ship ever named for an African American. And in 1943, Marian Anderson gave a concert benefiting the Red Cross in none other than Dar's Constitution Hall. After World War II, Anderson continued her successful performance career and her activism for Black American civil rights. She sang for worldwide audiences at presidential inaugurations and famously at the 1963 March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom. She received many prestigious awards, including the National Medal of the Arts, a Grammy Award for Lifetime Achievement, and the Presidential Medal of Freedom. In 1956, she published a memoir, My Lord, What a Morning. Eventually, retiring to a private home near Danbury, Connecticut, Marian Anderson and Eleanor Roosevelt stayed in friendly contact. Anderson visited Hyde Park, New York many times as a personal guest and as a speaker at FDR Library and National Historic Site events. Next to President Truman and Eleanor Roosevelt, with Fallow the Dog at her feet, she sang at the opening ceremony for the home of FDR in 1946. In 1972, she returned to eulogize Eleanor Roosevelt at the dedication of two major presidential library wings named for the former First Lady. Marian Anderson died in Portland, Oregon in 1992 at age 96. She is buried in Eden Cemetery in Collingdon, Pennsylvania, near her birthplace in Philadelphia. Many films, biographies, statues, art installations, even a U.S. postage stamp and an official gold coin now commemorate her life and work, celebrating her musical genius and her important legacy in the black freedom struggle.